Welcome to the Regular Joe's Podcast. I'm Dave Pisani. I'm Barry Kay. And I'm Todd Pleasant. What's going on, everybody? It's Earth yeah. Day. It's Earth Day. Oh, it is Earth Day. Earth yes. Day in the first day of Passover, like we just said. So happy Earth Day and Passover, everybody. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a potpourri. Not only one of those potpourris where we're totally un- unprepared. This we're prepared for. So yeah. we'll cover a bunch of stuff. Wolverine and Deadpool trailer came out today. We'll talk about that. I can't believe it's July. So it's like, what, three months away-ish? I don't know. Yeah. But that actually counting. So There's been a bunch of trailers that have come out that we haven't really talked about, too. I mean, not really? anything earth shot. We never talked about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the trailer for that. Yeah, we did. I don't think we did. We did. We, we, we went over trailers. Oh, yeah, I don't remember that. There's not much to that trailer. No, there isn't. Todd, did you um, see the trailer for the Penguin show? I did. I yeah, did. that was a while ago. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah but we never yeah. talked about it. Yeah, we were going to, but we never did. Yeah. All right. There you go. So we're not talking about that stuff, but we're talking about other stuff. Um, other random stuff. Let's go random. Barry, what do you got? Uh, I've just got a Star Wars scheduling update for everybody. Mm-hmm. So if you've been, if you haven't been watching the Bad Batch season three, you should be because it's freaking amazing. Um, yes. But as we record this, by the time this comes out, the f- episode fourteen will be out, um, and that means there's one episode left before the end. So episode fifteen, May first. Um, then on May fourth, we get Tales of the Empire, which is six short things that they drop. All in one shot. Um, and then in June, we get the Acolyte. So there's a bunch of Star Wars to watch between now. I think June 4th is the first episode. Oh, first and second put, episode of Why the wouldn't they put that on May 4th? It's a great question. I'm, I, I guess they wanted to drop these shorts on May 4th, but you'd think it would be a bigger splash for a, a brand new series to drop yeah. it on the 4th. Yeah, I don't know. And then we still think we're getting Skeleton Crew this year. They yeah, haven't so announced that. when, and Andor season two, I think we're going to get next year, probably. Yeah, it says TBD. Well, that's interesting. Well, well, we lots of good Star going. Wars. Lots Hopefully, of good Star Wars. No, lots. lots of Star Wars. Barry can confidently say lots of good Star Wars, because yes. that's what he'll think. Well, Bad Batch has been fantastic. How good know, it is. I know you're not watching it, Dave, but I know Todd is, so. It is, and it is awesome. I'm enjoying every second of it. So, In fact, I will say a couple times I've tried watching when I had other stuff going on and I stop and I say, no, I got to savor this. And I go back and when I have my full attention, the other thing like that, I'll say is X-Men 97. It's, it's so good. And I'm actually forcing myself not to watch more than one episode at a time. So I haven't seen any of that yet. I haven't either. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And, and um, yeah, yep. Absolutely terrific. Okay. Good. Uh, Todd, what you got? So, have you guys seen the trailer for Furiosa? Uh, the yes, okay, no. So there's two trailers out, and I only Dave, saw the Dave, first one. You're a one. bit of a Mad Max uh, fan, I know, because it's one of the first things that we we ever talked about. I like Mad Max. I didn't love that. I know that. I know that. Whatever, but Fury Road. I, okay. I liked Fury Road. I, I did right. too, very much. But. Did not the first Mad Max take place before the collapse, before society collapsed, and then... Mad Max. That, it collapsed, like, in the movie, I think. That's what I'm saying. So it started when things were breaking down. Yeah. Okay. So, in the trailer, the first of two trailers, it says, 45 years after the collapse, young Furiosa is taken from her family. This... So this predates the Fury Road by about 15 years. So my question is, how freaking old is Max <laughs> in in Fury Road? You see what I'm saying? This is obviously a different timeline, I guess. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, if this is now 60 years, at least, after the collapse, right? Doesn't that not make sense? Because like I, I said, the, the original Mad Max movie, I just... 
in my recollection, like I said, was collapse happens. Then it's what five years later? Who the hell knows? Five, ten, fifteen years later, when we we get yeah, it could be anything. Yeah, but isn't that weird? I got to say, like I a, saw the first trailer and and it didn't. And I loved Fury Road, and this one I just looked at and said, eh. Who played? Who's the lead? Is it that girl from the chess movie? Yes, yeah, 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 it's Anna it's, Taylor Joy. Anna, Anna Taylor Joy. I don't see that. And. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I, I will see it, but it's just that just struck me as really strange. It's like nobody like picked up on that. Is Max in it? No, oh. or presumably not. Who was so, the Who was Max in the other last one? Oh. Gerard Butler or somebody? No, no, um, no. Max isn't in it, is he? No, he was in the last one. Um, I can't believe you just. Uh, oh, it's uh, Tom Hardy. Thank Tom you, Hardy. Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. Yes. Same thing. I, I, honestly, I was stuck on Tom Hardy's name, and I almost said Shinzon. I was like, "That's what like, came to mind." I was like, oh, God, I "That's what you remember him from?" I, no, I'm saying, but he, I know who he is. It's like I was trying to put the actor's name with the atrocity. Come on, he's Venom. Yeah, so Venom. I I could have said Venom. He's too, also but, Bane. Yeah, that's it. Which makes no sense. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we'll see about that. Um. We texted about this. For All Mankind, season five. Uh, uh, it's renewed for season five. And a spinoff called Star City about the Roscosmos dealio. So it's a prequel. Now, I guess so. Yeah. No, it's it's going to take... It sounds we, like it's what going back to the alternate timeline, right, but, but through... But we started... This show started with pretty much the moments the Russians beat us to the moon. Yeah. So this has to be the story leading up to that. It's or at least I wonder start if it's going to be feel like too much backtracking. Hopefully they go quickly through it or jump around a little. So I, I enjoy that show quite a bit, but not as much as I did the first two seasons. So I'm hoping yeah. that uh, maybe season five picks up. Please tell me, I'm fine if it's ten years in the future. Baldwin can't be there. He, he just can't. He will be. <laughs> He's you a thousand he years be. old, <laughs> but it's like it's it's Danielle's only like in her sixties, but um, but yeah, they just need to they need to introduce some new characters because even like the younger characters are now in their forties, okay? Yeah, Al- Alita and and the uh, Kelly and and those people are, are in their forties. So they've got to yeah, get... Who knows what the jump's going to be. But we need some new hero characters. That's what I'm like saying. The, the, you need, the you villain need... characters they've introduced are okay, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah. It was not... There was, it, no one was too heroic this season. Everyone was sort of out for their own and kind of, you know, a bit of a tool. Yeah. When you really think about it. Maybe Except not Kelly. maybe Kelly, right. And even that Alita, I guess, fine. But honestly, they're not the greatest characters. No. Um... Well, it's still enjoyable. Though, when you, you I think right they can retire here, Margo, I think too. the first character in the show we were introduced to was Alita as a child. I think the first scene... Remember that? When when her family yeah. were basically coming... Oh, yeah. So, yes. yes. So that's... The, so, so technically, this is kind of her story. So, um, even though it's drifted away from that. Um, interesting. Yeah, we'll see where they go. Yeah. We'll see where they go. I, I will watch no matter what, because like I said, I've liked yeah. it. And they've done some cool stuff, and yeah. So, Barry, what else you got? It's better than Discovery. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the only other thing—did either of you see the trailer for Unfrosted, the Pop Tart movie? No, yeah. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Todd, it's 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 a movie about the creation of the Pop Tart and I, the, the Breakfast has... War, and it's Jerry yeah. Seinfeld. Directed it, I think. Yeah, they directed it. Yeah. yeah, and it has no historical facts in right. it at all. But except it looks for the funny. fact that there were pop tarts. It looks okay. funny. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will tell you, I have the best. I'm sure I've told you a story at one point. I have the best pop tart story ever. I will not drop it tonight, but sometime I will tell you the pop tart story. So we okay. do. I don't think we know of it. So I look no, I don't think we've ever heard that it, one. Is, in fact, in my podcasting class, I have them teach it to do and record a personal narrative and i tell them my pop tart story as an example and and pretty much all of them to the person always say they could nothing will ever happen in their life to match that wow so yeah interesting 
All right. All related to Power Tales. Yeah. Um, you know, they're remaking The Running Man, supposedly. Yeah. With that dude who's with that Sydney Sweeney lady, uh, Glenn Powell. Yeah. Oh. Who was hanging Glenn Powell's in, in like, everything. He is in everything. He seems like kind of a tool. But <laughs> he's, just... I, he's a tool in Maverick, so I don't know if he's a tool in real life. But And the, Todd and I were texting about this. And I it totally, remember, the totally did not, doesn't register when I think about it. Who directed, Barry, who directed Running Man? Oh, we, well, I was on that text with you. Oh, so were you? I, I thought it was just me and Todd. <laughs> I think I, for Paul some Michael reason, Glazer, right? For some Paul reason, Michael I discovered totally. that like three months ago. And I was like, did I ever know this? And it was like the weirdest thing. It was just, we've I talked feel about like it. I must have known it at some no, point. No, we did know it. We've talked yeah. about it. But it just seems really oh, odd. God. It's like. Yeah. Not that it's the greatest movie, but it's an iconic 80s It's a movie. great Arnold movie. In the pantheon yeah. of Arnold movies, it's a great movie. Oh, that doesn't David make it Soul, a great when movie. When David Soul died, they were talking about their careers post... Yeah. That's when I saw it. When they were talking about their careers post Starsky and Hutch. And, you know, how he went on to direct, and he was did Drowning Man, and I was like... And when I read that, I was like, hmm, okay. So, I don't know that I've ever seen that other than when it came out. Oh, oh God. Yeah, no question. Many, many times. Yeah. I, I, it's all. It's almost never on. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah. But anyway, um, you know, uh, I don't know if Ty, you got anything else? I don't think so. No. I did see Dune two. Okay. It's already Finally. on streaming. I paid twenty five dollars to watch it. Just, just less I than Barry and I paid. It. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's okay. It's better than okay, Dave. Is that right? It was a little confusing. Did it's you fine. rewatch Dune going into it? I. I said I had stopped. Pam and I were going to watch. It. I'm like I got to rewatch it. And then like a week went by. I'm like I'm not going to rewatch that movie. And then I. Uh, it helps a little bit if you're very familiar. I kind of remember. The first part I, we kind of talked through it. Yeah. But it was okay. It wasn't anything earth shattering. I mean, it's okay. I thought it was better than just okay. I liked it very good. much. I think visually, it's an extremely beautiful movie. It's it's visually it's just, it's nice, but you know and, it's funny. How I haven't seen the 84 Dune in probably since 84. And I'm like, is that the guy? Is that is 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 the guy from Masters of Air Sting? Yes. And I'm, I, I know he was. So I'm just saying, we, you just, yeah. it just pops back in your head. Yeah. I will um, kill him. I, I wanted him to deliver that line just yeah. because it's so memorable. But I don't Boy, I'll, I will tell all. you, don't go back and watch that. Just oh, it was not good when you saw it. It was the first not good time. when you saw it, but I'm telling you, the mat lines in that movie are so bad. It's but the guy who plays Paul Atreides, like he's a goofball now. He was like a a bad character on Friends or whatever. Some oh, Kyle McLaughlin, yeah. No, nah, Kyle McLaughlin's he, had a. I mean, between Twin Peaks. And everything well, he's, yeah, he's okay. always played and an oddball. I never really liked he's in Twin Fallout. Peaks. Oh, you're he's thinking of the, you're thinking of um, he's in Fallout. You're thinking of um, uh, when he was the captain in in yeah, um, yeah. What was in, that? In How I Met in Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother. How I Met Your Mother. That, yeah. that, that yeah. that's what sticks in my head. I'm like, yeah. that guy yeah. wasn't again, he was badass. Yeah. yeah. So I don't yeah, know if we're um, gonna do it tonight, but we should talk about Fallout. I haven't seen anything. Okay. So without without no, just saying without spoiling this. Okay. Should Dave watch Fallout? I think so, yeah. I I said this the other day. I put Fallout in the category Peacemaker. You will like this more than you feel you should. And I don't know anything about the video game. You don't need to, And you right? do you not absolutely need don't to. need to. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I don't want to know about the video game. No, you don't need to. And, and from what my son told me, it's a story that takes place in that universe. It's not a retelling of the of story the, of yes, the game. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's talk about it next week. I'll catch. All right, up. Well, I won't watch. I've only thing. seen three or four episodes so far. Yeah, I finished it this weekend, more. and it's because I finished some enclosed, other stuff. It is a fully enclosed story that that can still go further. So, and it's been renewed for season two. Yeah. Yeah. And I just saw that. I, I'm not surprised. Did anyone watch Rebel Moon Part Two? Good not ask yet. Did that. you Did you see? It's been it's out for like it's been week. out for like. Two weeks old. But no, did you see that it it's got a 19th. 13? Three days. It's got a 13 it's on Rotten. It like two weeks ago. It's no, no, three no, it was three this days. week. It's, been it's three got days. a 13 on Rotten <laughs> Oh, my God. And then you know your buddy was saying today, I read an article. Six. He's, I didn't even read the article. I just read yeah. the headline. <laughs> it's like, 
uh, Zack Snyder talks about part three and six hour He's director's cuts. He's got ideas cuts. for six stories, yeah. yeah. Six hour director's cuts. How many? You know what? I'll watch them, Dave. So, oh my so, god! No, here's the thing, though. All we heard about for years was there was this huge core of Snyder Bros, okay, who loved everything he did, right? And they were the needs. They need the director's cuts, and they need the Snyder cut, and all this kind of stuff. What happened to these people? Did they just like they're, they're they not drinking up. the Kool Aid anymore? Yeah. Um, it's it's. Because oh, I apologize. It has a fifteen on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh well, it probably went up. It probably went <laughs> what's up. What's the What's the audience? Because now audience now, score is only fifty three. Now fifteen yeah. people have seen it. Um, I'll watch it, but uh, I will watch because... it too. But I'm going to watch it too. Uh, you know. But... <laughs> so I read a very kind of surfacey article on it. And they said, you know how it was a lot of setup and no pay. <laughs> the first one was a lot of setup and no payoff. Well, you're used to that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna get more of it. <laughs> it was like, okay, you know. You know what you need more of? Fanboy Cops. Absolutely. Uh, I, just, I just I have to say one more thing before we go into deep into talking about how awesome Fanboy is. I went to find Rebel Moon Part Two to put it on my list. It wasn't even on the homepage. Yeah, now. it's it's it, it is bizarre. Yeah. I had to search yeah. for it. <laughs> They're just like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have to search for Fanboy Collectibles. Yep. Um, Last week we talked about a black series lightsaber from somebody. There's a Yoda one this week, uh, the, up for pre-order. They don't. Yoda's in stock. Yoda. Oh, it is in stock. So yes. check that out. Um, XO six Captain Shaw from Picard. Is that a uh, shock or what? I mean, yeah, that, boy, they're putting a lot of Picard stuff out there. But that just really that really surprised me. I did they're not. Going ex- deep. Good for them. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, then they've got some Hot Toys uh, sort of uh, expanded universe, Lord Stark. Todd Killer and I were from... texting this morning about uh, BT-1, the droid from what, Dr. Yep, Afra. Yep. I don't know what that is, but that's It's a cool an awesome droid. astromech droid with, like, blasters and missile It's the, I know, but what's, the evil what's he R2-D2. Yeah. But it's a cool-looking droid. It's, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it is dwarfed in its coolness by the evil C-3PO. It was triple which, zero. Yeah, which will, I bet you was coming at some point. Oh, that, so. that dude. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Have a, hey, so you built me the model everything. of that, Barry, and I absolutely love it. And it's it's should not be on my friendly robot shelf at work, but it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so cool. Um, yeah. You know, Pops and Sideshow and Kotobukias and Hasbro and statues. Don't forget the statues. There's all the statues the you need. long-awaited... Um, Batman from the, the, the from Batman um, is from the Batman from the Batman the Batman is in stock with the bat signal. And, uh, I just got mine last week, and um, it's uh, yeah, and I will open it at some point soon. So, there you go. So check those guys out. And um, Troy texted us. Someone actually went to the store not that he let us know about who uh, was a listener. So oh sweet. Oh, you didn't read that? You sent us an email. I yeah, I'm going to say it. his name because I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Paul. Uh, Paul from Enfield. Stop by. He's a, he. When we say stop by and tell him the regular Joe sent you, he did that. Thank so you, you for guys do, do that, too. that, Paul. And we we yes. we know Paul, and we've we've known Paul since back in like Aesop days. So so yeah, we've seen him in Rhode Island. Yep. Um, yep. So check them out. Fanboycollectibles.com. Check them out. They're stored in Newtown, Connecticut. Like Paul did. Tell them the regular Joe sent you. Okay. Discovery Episode 4. So, you know how Barry loves anything that's Star Wars related? Todd loves anything with time travel. Because he said, hey, there's re- a good episode of Discovery. That is not what no, I said. That I'm is not, not even close exactly. to what I'm, I said. I'm joking. Um, we're, all, we're not talking about every episode of Discovery. But this one wasn't bad. It wasn't heavy on feelings, which was nice. It felt like it felt like a good next gen episode to me. Like it was a, it was something different. It, it I found it got a little tedious after a while, but I think at first I actually was like, oh wow, they're actually doing something different here. But when I saw the Red Angel, I was like, what the he-? no? I never want to see the Red Angel oh, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I did like that. It wasn't like. What does everybody think? Tilly, what do you think? And 
whoever the fuck. I, it, I got I to like, see Tilly dead. I like it was, it was nice and, good. when they went back to early, like early season one Discovery. Like everyone hated her, <laughs> and no yeah. one trusted her. We haven't for, we've forgotten that, and it's the fact that like she and and seeing Aram again was like it was kind of sad, and it was like, but also again I thought that was cool. Spoilers, by the way, that they they actually did backdate the bridge. They had the uh, all the, the old bridge controls and stuff like that. That was kind of neat. Um, no, that, I mean that part of it was good, and and seeing Tilly dead was was nice for a minute there. She got no, she was moving around. Well, I thought yeah. she was dead. She wasn't dead. Um, I was hoping. Um, <laughs> I, I I like that they did something different, and that it I like that it was the two of them. It was a good way for them to bond without yeah. him getting lectured like he had been, and and it wasn't them chasing an artifact. It wasn't, and, and it know. was it was a nice. I just there's, sometimes you, it, what it made me think was. Sometimes there's just too many people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's too many storylines with... Last week's Trill one, you got... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I... I don't remember everybody's names. You got the Trill person. You got his Partner. significant other. Yeah. You got... I, I, you got yeah. too yeah. many people. Again, I like I said, I, I did like it. I I, I didn't... You know, it's, it's, it didn't redeem the show for me. But like I said, I did like it. There were some funny things in there... I, I said my I think my favorite line in the whole thing was when Reno looks to Stamets and says, "Are you stuck in a time loop?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like, like she would be the only one in the history of the the Star Trek canon who actually recognized that somebody was stuck in a time loop. And, and but a nice no, time didn't. loop, time time travel is always good. Yeah, it's always fun when you see a character fighting themselves, like the, yes. the future and version of themselves fighting too. the past version. And, so and, and, it, and, and it's I still don't like I said I, I I do not understand why they gave her the hair that they gave her. It, Is that what she had? It's so incredible. No, I'm saying the current hair. It, oh, the braid. I like this it's hair. so yeah, impractical having like hair nice. waist length hair, but when you're fighting aliens and stuff like this. But anyways, but seeing the two of them fight was kind of cool. That that was kind of cool. So um, yeah, and I like how the guy and I, I sort like... of. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. The guy learned a lesson, the the commander, without it being told to him. You know, lecture. Also, but I also just... like the way that, you know, he you you got the oh he was doing short shrift. He was giving everybody thirty seconds or whatever like that. And one of the things he learned actually made a yeah. difference. You know. Yeah. And and you know, and they tied that in together. I thought that was that was good. That was good. Yeah. It was, um, it was the best episode so far this season. Without question. Yeah, and, and I was going to say that I, I like that the the person who undermined her in the past was herself. Oh, yeah. Because it could easily have been another and, officer and or somebody. And I will say this. They did a good job to whatever, however they did, they did a good job making her look like her past self. But also the affect was there. You know, she was angry and she was, you know, and, they, and she came across the way that character did earlier. And that's part of what I, like I said, I, I, I felt that they did a good job with that. Sometimes when, when, when they, they said it was Lorca's Enterprise, did you I know, for a right? second hope we were going to see oh, Jason? Oh, my God. I was, I was really hoping that yeah. or even even Ash or something like that, where it's, it's just, you know, it's, you know, do one of those callbacks. But Aram was interesting. Because I guess they have access. I wonder if it, it was the act- same woman who played her. Oh, it is because she's she plays a different character in the show. Oh, I thought the blonde girl. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I haven't seen her this season. No, we haven't either. But I think she's still around. Yeah. So yeah. But, so it was good. Anyways, it was okay. it, I I will go this far. I will say it is the best episode of the past two seasons. I'd so, give you that. Yeah. yeah. So it was tighter. It just wasn't like yeah. yeah. There was definitely some feelings in there. Like, does she need to re- run into book and kiss him? Like, who cares? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But coming off of last and, and, week, it was a breath of fresh air. Yes, for sure. For sure. Uh, I will totally sure. agree with that. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm just going in the order yep. I wrote these down. So Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. So I had the, no idea. We get the full trailer now. We the had full a trailer because it comes out in July. Yeah. I have no idea what's actually going to go on in this movie. There's a lot of cursing even in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. But it just looks like fun. It does. Yeah. It looks That's, a lot of fun. I don't fun. know what else to say about it. I mean, I love that he's I, in the classic yellow uniform. It seems like they're referencing Days of Future Past with, when they're talking about how he saved his universe. They're in yeah, a different no, universe. There's, there's, some, there's some more stuff going on there. With the the 
bald woman is Cassandra Nova, who is Charles Xavier's sister in some realities. Okay. An insane sister. So I did not know that. Me either. That's and that's so uh, there was actually a really, really good Grant Morrison story arc that she was introduced in. And um, so that's interesting. And so it's basically an evil doctor. It, it's, it's an evil Professor X who happens to be a woman. Um, so this is so is this establishing that Deadpool is in a different universe? I th- without than And I think I think this it. also I mean, kind of establishes that Deadpool may have. You know, because again, he talks to, he breaks the the fifth wall Wonderful. all the time. I I think it's, you know, I I think we're going to see that he's kind of at a point where everything comes together, and I think all that like wreckage that they were fighting amongst. I think there's a lot. There's significant articles there to different things, including well, like I said we saw Ant Man's head. The giant um, Ant Man head, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was a Sentinel head. No, first. that was I that's sure. what I thought at first no, that's too. An Ant Man helmet, yeah. It's an Ant Man oh, helmet, cool. and that's where like I yeah, said, there was, I, there's no way you had any sense of what this movie is about from this trailer. I, I don't and think. and we've got the time authority there, and I think that I I think he's like an anomaly in of himself, and I think we'll get we'll get something like that. But I I think I, I'm just. I just can't wait to see more of this. I, I just and there, there's so many people in this that like they didn't show any. They of didn't show any of the cameos in the. Oh no, they did for Garner. Yeah. No, all the, these the, other people. <laughs> the the sort of post credit sequence in a in the the um the trailer with the the his his roommate talking about the oh, cocaine. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Good. No, that's the that's the that's the one. I have Feige hard no. <laughs> well, she so, and she's also in Fallout. That woman. Yes, yes, she is. Yeah, and I actually I love my favorite scene in the whole trailer was when Wolverine takes the claws right to Deadpool's crotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> he can't in the bar and he can't pop the can't pop. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, the, oh, it yeah. goes by super fast, but on the on the muzzle of of Deadpool's gun, it says "Wait for the Flash." Yes, yeah, so smile, yeah, wait, yeah, so smile, smile, and wait flash. for the Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun lot of in crazy. jokes. Um, the when they walk out and they turn the corner, they're, they're coming out by these like damaged storefronts and they turn the corner. Behind them is a store called Layfeld's Only Feet. Okay, Rob Layfeld was the person who originated uh, Deadpool, and is notorious for not being able to draw feet, and oh really, so badly that like I mean they they. they Really misshapen and really weird. And a lot of times he like draws around draw or do around drawing feet and stuff. And so it's been an in joke forever. And and uh, you know he drew like medic- ridiculous manga feet at one point. And then other times, like I said, he just you know you'll see elongated le- legs with no feet on them, so that they're out of frame. So this is the yeah that was an in joke. Um, yeah. So there's there's going to be a lot of that I suspect. This I I. I really excited about this. So, yeah, it looks good. good. So, see it if you haven't seen it. The trailer that is. We're moving right along. Um, so, Barry bailed on The Walking Dead. What's the name of it? Those Who Live or whatever. Yeah, something Almost. like that. I, I I got three episodes in. I think it was three. It was the one uh, you hated when they were all the one when they were in that apartment, in the apartment. building for the whole yeah. episode. Didn't get much better after that. And I Maria that. and I both were like, I don't think we need to watch any more of this. Yeah, I finished it just to finish it. And spoilers, whatever. I, it's just eh. okay. It so I will say this in its favor, okay, and I mean this sincerely. Any other Walking Dead episode, every any other Walking Dead series would have taken entire series to tell the story that this told in six episodes thank god it was only six episodes i agree yeah, that's right. what i'm saying it's like in a gajillion seasons they finally learned brevity okay and i think it was because they only had these people for that period of time but the arc from start to finish 
There's no way they would have covered this in six episodes in a regular Walking Dead season. There was a lot going on, especially the what they r- w- wrapped up in I the last also episode. Did, that's what I'm saying. I did not expect You can spoil this. it for me because I'm okay, never going to go back and watch it. I did not expect this to, to be spoil. tied up in a bow like that. I John really Locke did gets not. killed and they go back to Alexandria. It's uh, Sort of, yeah. You don't does see anybody. His, you don't see anybody but the the daughter and the son. Well, what else do you need to see? They weren't well, going to get all those people back. Presumably, yeah. I guess everybody else is off in their own series. But uh, I really didn't even. So, so they're in this military thing, and maybe it's because I hadn't been paying that much attention. But I didn't get that. There's this whole government, and then they're this military faction who was going against the government the whole time. Right? He set that I mean, up in episode that- one. The yeah, guy that but recruited it's... him was trying to find people to help him go up against. Yeah, their John Locke was trying to get him to. Yeah, so no, the the they were trying to go, but they really didn't touch on it since episode one. I don't know, it's whatever. The, there was a, and then a, they, they, no the, they were they part of lived. the military arm of this new society. Okay, we never really saw anyone from the new society. Well, no, it right? was basically everyone came in. They did corpse, they did killing the dead duty, and then they yeah. moved on to other things, or they joined the military. And he okay, joined, yeah. you know. And so, but I think because they focused so much on that, it looked like that was the only track. But all the people yeah. in the city were basically people who had killed corpses. They really could his have friend showed... at the beginning was like the city planner guy who got right. a job. That's what that's I'm right. saying. Right. They should have showed a little more of that. And then moved on to another really job. really didn't get a sense of like the whole breadth of this other. Because they have helicopters and everything. I don't know. It was just not great. I don't know. I, I, do, I do not think it was great. I... I guess I kind of feel closure now on this, like the whole thing. I do not feel the need to go back and watch the seasons I didn't see. But oh God, no! It, it's but it's but we spent a lot of time watching this show, and I kind of feel like because we've seen the ending of the two of their stories, or at least an ending for the two of their stories, I, I'm I'm okay with this now. So um, it's. It's it is what it is, and and we got to see a, a certain character killed who I despised from second one, and and that was good. You can say who. It was uh, what's her name, the woman with the the trash lady with all the different names. Yeah, I and, figured that's who you were yeah. talking about. The one that and, the one that kept, that put Rick on the helicopter. Yep. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Basically, Rick called her out at one point for having a bad haircut, which is totally true because she said one bad haircut yeah. after another, and and. Um, and we get but to see whole, uh, we get to see our, our old was, friend was, Seth Gillum in there too. Yeah, he was in a couple episodes. Yeah, so, but the whole so at the end they decide to the whole army is going to destroy Portland. Yeah, for whatever reason, because Portland's a threat. I don't know, whatever. And there's a thousand bombs that are just stacked up on the tarmac with no one guarding no, them in a tent. Which makes no sense. And then they attach hand grenades to them and detonate them, and they live anyway, even though they, they ran away they within, like... They were under like, a tarp. It's oh, okay. you're right. And then he sets off... It was a bomb uh, dispersal tarp, so it, it blocked apparently the... Apparently so. Uh, and how about when he had, like, hand grenades go off, and he lived again, yeah. even though... But zombies just died. It was oh, yeah. Do, 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 there was never any point in this... Okay, let me just say this. Okay, you're in a helicopter, okay, that's flying, that's flying, and you open the door and jump out and pull somebody out with you, okay, your chances of survival are not good. <laughs> it was over water. Yeah. Well, but how but high how, over water? They're flying during a thunderstorm. Like five feet over water. But how, how but I'm saying, she, I mean, it was flying pitch during black a thunderstorm. How could she even see they had they to be she several had... hundred feet up above the water. She had no idea where they were going to land. There was no... That's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, yes. This goes back to the reason why I bailed because of that whole let's attack Negan with our corrugated aluminum (laughs) that protects everything. (laughs) Armor, yeah. Armor. Yeah. It's just... Anyway. I'm glad. Yeah, I... That whole episode where they were in the building collapsing around them, I was just like, this is just stupid. So. And you were right. It's stupid. Yeah. yeah. 
So I don't know if anyone has a different opinion. Let us know. I was watching but. Starship Troopers yesterday, and every time I watch it, I forget that Seth Gilliam's in that. Yeah, I see him in it, and I'm like, oh yeah, yep. that's right, he's in this yep. too. Oh, um, I wish I remembered that when we interviewed him because yes. I would have talked yeah, to him about we've that. Said that. Uh, <laughs> Boy, that's a long time ago. It was a yeah. long the, time ago. It was one of our movie. first interviews. So no, I meant the movie, but oh, that too. So he must have been super young. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, it's. Right. I, I don't think I hated it as much as you guys did because I think I went in with such low. It was it, it, such low I really expectations. Paid, paid. I had very low expectations, okay, so and I, I didn't will say really this, like, though, Pay attention. Episode two got me in the way where like I started like feeling her. You know, not feeling for, her, but you know, what I'm saying the friends and stuff that she made, and it was like, and then all of a sudden these people are dead, and I was like, yeah. This is what Walking Dead was. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it, it kind of makes me wonder whether, like, part of the supposed mental health crisis that we have in, in this country right now has something to do with the viewership of Walking Dead for a decade. Because it's fucking depressing. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it really you, is. Whenever sure. you meet a human being that has any redeeming They're... qualities, something horrible happens to them. Yeah. And I know. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Okay, moving right along. All right, we're going to a not often used um, segment called What's on My Workbench? Well, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. Regular Joe's What's on My Workbench? Barry, what's on your workbench? I'm building a TIE fighter. I've been building this TIE fighter for a while because I'm taking my time and I'm uh, what it's so it's a one thirty second scale TIE fighter model. It's a relatively new kit put out by AMT. I got it for Christmas. Um, it's the same scale as the models that they used in to make the first Star Wars. So when this ship is done, it, it's pretty big. Um, and what they did was they, they don't provide a lighting kit for it, and they don't even provide any lighting instructions, but they engineered it in a way that if you choose to light it, you can, and they've made it relatively mm. easy for you to do that. So I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of build videos and other people and how they've gone about it. I've done a lot of research on paint colors because, and I've said this to you guys from the beginning, I wanted it to look like it looks on screen in the first Star Wars movie. I didn't really want to try to make it look like what the model itself looked like. I wanted it to look like what I remember seeing when I saw the movie. And that's like a light gray ship with black wings. Um, but the models weren't that. <laughs> so, and we've talked a lot about, a lot off the air about color timing and, and, and blue screens and lighting on set and how things can look very different than they actually look uh, when you see them on screen. And um, that's really the case with, with the TIE Fighters. I mean, in later movies, the, the actual color, the blue shade, the shade of blue that they were is more visible. Um, but in, I, And I was even re-watching screen, uh, I was pulling screenshots from, from Star Wars just today of the TIE Fighters, and, and damn it, they look light gray with black wings. So... That that's really what I'm going for. So yeah, and I we were saying because when I think of those three movies in terms of color, I think of Star Wars as not totally full of color. It seems you know desaturated, and all that stuff happens. It was chemicals back then. They call it color timing and stuff, and they literally have to as they're developing the the prints, you know, set set certain timing, and I feel like they pulled desaturated that. And that, that was, was a seventies totally makes... thing too. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Empire definitely has way more color to it. You know, you think of the Bespin with the sun yep. and coming and down, Jedi on, and then on Jedi the, in, the, in the forest and everything, and or sure. a ton yeah. of color. So yeah. I think those are all three different, and those are either choices or maybe not so much in Star Wars. I know George wanted to be like this. Totally look different than Star Trek and all those where it's a lived-in universe kind of thing. So that's something you could do to get that look. So maybe that's why. Yeah, I mean, so and I'll, I'll hold up some. I mean, it's not finished yet, so I'm holding up pieces. And I'll take some pictures. But, you know, the wings are about 13 inches from top to bottom. They're big. It's a big, big, uh, big wing. I actually just finished clear coating these. Two. These wings are done. 
Um, I had, and, and, and the way that the, the, they've really engineered this kit really well because each one of these panels is separate pieces that, that key together. And then each one of these spokes off this main section are separate pieces. So when you put it together, you don't see any seams, but it, oh, it's great. actually a lot of pieces go into it. Um, but I painted it, I weathered it, I clear coated it. I've, I've done everything I need to do on the wings. So the wings are done. I finished the base yesterday. I'm actually a little proud of this just because, you know, it's just one of these dome bases that they give you. And it's got a metal rod and then it, it basically, you know, it attaches to the bottom oh, of, it's a, of the ship. That's interesting. But because I wanted to do the lighting and I needed to figure out a way to have the battery, pow- you know, where am I going to put the battery? How am I going to have switch to turn it on and off? Um, so I was able to drill out holes on the base. I have the, the main switch. This is just the, this is going to be the light on and off switch, the white one. And there is a really small switch above it, which is a momentary switch because I'm wiring LEDs behind the blasters in the front of the ball. And they have like so a, you an could orange... fire the guns. So this is when you push this, the guns are going to fire. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> so I got it's a and it's a momentary circuit. So I'm going to wire those lights up de- separate from the main ball. It's all going to be on the same power source. Um, and I was able to cut pieces of the bottom off, so I've got the battery mounted on a clip underneath. Oh, cool. And then the wires run straight up through this metal rod, and they're going to it's going to come up into the the ball. The cockpit um, has a the, the floor for the cockpit is clear in the kit that they give you. And you can either just paint the whole thing, or if you do what I did, you can spend hours masking off all the little uh, stripes on the floor so that you can have the floor be gray with red uh, cutouts, and then you can light it from underneath to actually have the red. Because if you look in those cockpits, it's like a red glow in those cockpits. Mm. So if you light it from underneath, you can actually achieve that. So I don't know if you can see this, but... There's white little white chips here. These I've never used these LEDs before, but they're oh, these little LEDs, chip yeah. chip LEDs, mm. and they're mounted into the bottom of the ball, and they shine up. Oh, that's so cool! So they'll actually shine up through the floor. I've tested all this; it all works, thankfully so far. And then this is the main. This is the front section of of the mm-hmm. cockpit. Um, you know, the the floor mm. is is a clear red. So when when the light shines through it, it'll shine up in, and then. I installed the, the gun LEDs inside there, and oh. I was able to get them in there. And then I used um, heat shrink to cover the LEDs so that you don't have any light bleed of that green. Because these have like an orange. These guns were actually all clear, but I masked off just the tips to kept, keep the tips clear. And then I painted them clear orange. So they look orange when they're not lit, but there's actually green LEDs behind them because the, huh. the blasters on the TIE fighters were green. So, That's cool. I've got, you know, wires hanging off of everything because I haven't f- finished the final assembly yet. And then this is the, the back part of it. And there's two LEDs that go in for the engines in the back. And these also had separate clear pieces that I was able to paint everything except the center. And then there was a painted clear red. So when those light up, they'll be clear red. So I'm getting very close to being able to seal this thing up. Um, I had to order some more. Of the, these LEDs use this very, very fine wire. Mm. and I needed more of it to be able to put the leads in for everything. So I actually just ordered a spool of red and a spool of black. They ship today. So once that stuff gets here, I can finalize everything. And then it's really just going to be assembly. Um, There's a lot of little pieces that go on the outside of it um, that I'm not putting on until I get the two main hull sections closed up. But even like the, the, the later versions, they might not have repainted the base color, but there's a lot of little pieces on the, the ball of the TIE Fighter that were different colors of gray. Um, oh. On the A New Hope ones, though, it's just the main ring around the, the cockpit. And then on the canopy, the top canopy, I don't know if you can see this, but there's different, some different oh, yeah. panels are yeah. painted gray. What I find really interesting, and you'll, you'll never notice this unless I point it out to you, when they show the outside of the TIE Fighter, the cockpit canopy... The line goes straight down the middle here. But mm-hmm. when they show you the interior shot of the TIE Fighter pilot, it's actually turned like that. Oh, that's weird. 
Yeah. So, the, so the, the, it's like that when you're inside the cockpit and it's like that when, when you're outside the cockpit and they must just not have built the interior set the same way the, as right, they yeah, built the yeah, model. Yeah. But they actually key this. They have two separate spots keyed here so you can actually oh position God. it either way. That's funny. Yeah, it's pretty pretty well, wild. You wouldn't want the bar in the center of your, right? It makes total sense, except they built the models that way. Yeah. <laughs> the bar goes straight up the middle, but when they do the interior shots of the cockpit, they've turned it. That's yeah. funny. I pretty would have crazy. never even recognized that at all. It, it was something that I didn't notice until I questioned why did this have two different you know, places where you could position yeah. the, the cockpit. And then I did a little research and the things you find out, it's crazy. So realistically, so anyway, they're not looking out the window anyways. I mean, the window's kind of... No, a, a, they're a, looking at absurd, this, this yes. screen in front of them to right. to target, yeah. 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 But I'm, I'm actually very happy with the way it's coming out. It's actually coming out... Well, it's not done yet, but so far it's coming out better than my expectations, so... That's good. Yeah, cool. so that's what's on my workbench right now. Todd, what's on your workbench? Okay, I, I continue to play with a 3D printer. I've... I kind of been obsessed for a long time with with making Moon Knight's helicopter. Shock, shocking! And so there's there's basically two different Moon copters, and I collected all these reference photos from all the different comics, and basically realized that every single artist drew this differently. So I've there's two main designs, and I've I'm kind of boiling it down to kind of my perfect version, combining the different attributes of the different designs so you got basically the kind of crescent shaped helicopter here <clears throat> my final version is going to be tw about twice this size the one i'm holding is about four inches high and the engines will pivot and the the helicopter blade will pivot and i've got i'm working on both those things right now and i've got incomplete models of both where it does that and so this is going to, this is a little more complicated because of that. And then, um, then the other is kind of a flat, I don't know, kind of crescent shaped thing that's, you know, kind of looks like that. And like a Cylon Raider. It looks like Cylon Raider. Yeah. Or actually, you know what it really looks like, Dave? It's like a F302 from Stargate. Oh, from Stargate. Yeah. 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 Very, very similar to the point where I want to look at, like dates of the comics and stuff like that. Cause there's certain drawings of this in the comics that look just like that. And I'm wondering which preceded the other and, and, um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the idea. So ultimately I'm going to have two different ones, the kind of flat one and the kind of more traditional, non-traditional helicopter design. And it's just fun. It's neat being able to, you know, do these things in, in on the screen and then, you know, an hour later, pick so them up and them play in with Tinkercad, them. Yeah, I'm doing right? it in Tinkercad. Which, if, if anyone 3D prints and you haven't played around with Tinkercad, play around with it. Great it's it's easy. Point. It's dirt simple yeah. to do. I use it for a lot of stuff. And, it's great. Yeah, it's super easy. And I've got like, the problem now is I've got like 12 different designs I've done. And I've got things I like in each of the different designs. And now I've just got to combine them and print it out bigger. So I'll, so I'll do that shortly. when you so that's the thing. So you made this about four inches. If you when you want to make the big one, are you just going to size? Oh, up? I'm just sizing it up. I'm printing them. Yeah, okay. I'm printing them at twenty five percent right now. Oh, okay. because these are basically drafts, and then yeah. I figure out tolerances and stuff like that. But again, the the engines rotating is what the the issue is, and I just don't want to print it full size until I get that that thing. Got and, you. No, and I'm cool. trying to do this in in basically four pieces that I will either glue together or snap together. And, and, uh, and I think I want to have the, I think I want to have it all snapped together and, and mm. um, which is challenging where it's, you know, I'm, I'm, so I'm printing the engine components. It's got basically two engines that, that stick on either side and that rotate. And I think I'm trying to do like a ball joint between the two. So a socket on one ball and the other, yeah, yeah. and they combine inside the hull and snap together. And so that's what I'm working on now. So, which some hmm. that stuff is kind of is in Tinkercad, but you have to, you have to use their sizes. And so I've got to do some scaling up for that. So, Oh yeah. Well, I haven't used that, but that's cool. Well, well, I'll, I'll get there, but it's fun. It's just, like I said, it, it's I'm really cool glad design. I got the printer. Really the last time we were at your house, I got the nudge to finally go ahead and buy it. And, 
and it's just been a lot of fun and I've blown through a couple rolls of filament already and it's it's just kind of neat something that again playing with the design stuff is fun but when you can actually hold it in your hand it's that much cooler yeah 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 that's cool oh and then I and I and I'm fin- I'm working on finishing my my uh expanse gun and I, I've got a couple more drafts oh. on that that been okay. going. And then I got to talk to Barry That's about cool. painting it. So, yep. Neat. Yep. Neat. Okay. Dave, I understand so, you're cutting up bodies. I'm cutting up bodies. So <laughs> my what's on my workbench, literally on one of my workbenches, is uh, you saw or you heard or whatever. I got the chimp costume from Planet of the Apes, and. Figure it out, put it on mannequin, and I don't know if we said this. We may have said this on the air last. Mannequins are tall, like like the mannequin that goes on my um, Planet Earth John Saxon costume. It's the right size. I'm assuming John Saxon was like six feet tall. It's a big mannequin, and it fits that costume perfectly. So this one, I wanted something smaller, and I looked all over the place, and I wound up getting at the same place I got that mannequin that's a fiberglass one they have fiberglass and plastic this one it wasn't expensive and i'm like if i have to cut it up or make a mistake i don't want to do it on a 300 hundred dollar thing this thing was like 120 bucks um so i got it it's made out of it's like really thick milk container material okay uh I mean, Brian on the last week's show, oh, it's made out of such and such, and you know that doesn't glue. I didn't know that, and I didn't know it doesn't glue, So, I, but I was never going to glue it anyway. But it's so also anyway, probably very light, I would imagine, right? It's very light, Yeah. yes, it, which is nice and easy to manipulate, and I'm going to throw some some pictures in, this, some you saw and some you didn't, so, um, and this one, it has a very high neck. And it does not have hands that that come off. And I don't like hands on costume mannequins. So I cut the neck off and I cut the hands off. But then, but then it, in its whole outfit and with the shoes, with the monkey feet shoes, it's tall. It's six feet tall. And I'm like, that that doesn't work. At first I was, and I think we talked about it, I was going to try to... Try to uh, you know, make maybe get it to bend over, sort of like a chimp. But Punch a little bit, I, yeah. Yeah, that's not as realistic as possible. So anyway, I decided I'm going to make it shorter. So what I did was I took two feet, two feet, two inches out of the thighs. And it's interesting enough, the legs seem really long. Uh, longer, they're longer. I'm the same size as this mannequin. I'm almost about 5'11". Its legs were four or five inches longer than mine, so it has oddly long legs. Unnaturally long to me. legs, yeah. Yes. So it was. It. I, I was hoping that I wasn't going to make it look really out of disproportion, but to me, its legs were out of proportion. Anyway, so I cut two inches out of the thighs, and then I cut two and a half inches out of the calves, and so you know. All I did was to join them back because this stuff is pretty flexible. Was I took some blocks of half inch plywood, like you know, little like you know, maybe four by one inch blocks, and I screwed, I screwed uh, in through them and joined them. It was really easy because the stuff is easy to manipulate. And then I just covered it up with some duct tape. Um, <laughs> was... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I sent I sent the wrong thing. Well, but you, did you see the picture Todd sent you? <laughs> so yesterday, Dave sent us a picture of body parts chopped up on his work table, and Todd just painted blood oh, into the picture nice. and sent it back to us. I sent those on the wrong chain. That's a pretty funny picture, I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> Mark has no idea that I, I sent it to him by mistake, and he goes to me, he goes, what costume is that? Why does it have have hands for feet? <laughs> okay. okay. It does kind of look like it has hands for feet. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so the picture you just sent us is, is the original, is it before is you the original it up, thing, right? yeah. Okay. And then, so, so then I shortened it, and this is the result. I shortened it. And it definitely looks better proportioned, like like a chimp. 
And the other thing is, I know, Barry, you had mentioned that. So with these chimp costumes, there is an undershirt. And they're actually not even undershirts. They're just sleeves that go under the green tunic. Right. And to me, I've always seen, I thought it was like a brown burlap material. I looked up on a, this is what's interesting. And talk about lighting in a movie. Because in the movies, it's this brown material. So I looked up from an auction it is red, and really? it's a red and tan material that huh. totally photographed. Oh wow, brown. that's an interesting material. That's not something you're going to find like at. Well, I actually I went to this crazy material store in New York, and I I decided like like what you were talking about. This is where I was saying before. Um, do I try to get something that looks like that, or do I get it to what it looks like? What I think you see on screen right so i got this brown material that looks like what it was on screen it wasn't as hard as i thought it would be if it was a fiberglass one it would have been a nightmare yeah so how tall is that now in total that- it's about i'd say it's it's about the size of like a five foot six inch person okay so it's about my height yeah and much more like there's no first of all chimpanzees are Three feet tall to make them six feet tall. Yeah, I mean, how tall was Ronnie McDowell? Couldn't have been yeah, that tall. He's probably five, six, five, yeah. seven. Yeah. Okay. No, it looks really good. So, let, final thought. Barry, why don't you start our final thought? And we can I can. Just... So, <clears throat> a few years back now, um, we interviewed uh, B. Joe and John Trimble, who. If you don't know who they are, you should. Um, they were basically the, 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 the husband and wife that saved Star Trek back in the 60s. That started the campaign to save Star Trek. Uh, our friend Brian Mix knows them personally and is friends with them. Uh, so he was able to get them to come on our show. Um, and we interviewed them. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what episode number it was because uh, we'll, we're going to republish that show. Um, but unfortunately, on the 19th of April, John passed away. So we wanted to say a final thought about John. He was 87. John and his wife, Bijo, were instrumental in, in sci-fi in the 60s. I mean, the stories that they told us on that podcast like blew, blew us away. How I mean, I, I knew about the, the, the letter-writing campaign and the Save the Star Trek campaign, but all the other stuff that they were involved in, I had, I had no idea until we they, they, talked They were them. fan culture before fan culture was a thing. And... and built a you know were instrumental in that community and and just wonderful people and and yeah just just great to talk to and and i think this it's like i said it's a uh it's a good listen it was it was it was a it was a good conversation with them and and uh and we we learned a lot so, yeah they were super super nice like the beginning of all this stuff you know the, the star whole, trek obviously the, sure. the whole internet thing with like trying to save the show that you love and whatever is completely grew out of their, you know, the, the efforts that they, they spearheaded and, and it but had cl- never clicking happened a before. link to sign an online petition is one thing. What these people did was, was, it was amazing. And, and it was, it, it was profoundly successful. We, we very likely got a, a third season of Star Trek because of their efforts. So absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. um, we so are going to re release that episode yeah. in its entirety. Um, well, we're going to re release the interview with them in its entirety. We're going to chop off, some of the other stuff, but yep. um, yeah, it's a long interview. It's a full length show on it of its own, just with the interview with them. And, and we'll post that out this week as well. Yeah. So, so rest in peace, rest in peace, trouble. Yeah. Really? Yeah, definitely. And there's, so there's a lot of stuff on Facebook and anyone in the, any of the Star Trek groups is, you know, making comments and, you know, definitely uh, instrumental in, in, in a lot of, you know, the there are books that they wrote together that yep. are like some of the we all had them actually sign. We yep. sent those books for them to sign, which was awesome because yep. there was like one of the key Star Trek yep. books, and, uh, the Concordance. Concordance was uh, and yeah, and our written by them. Our thoughts go out to B. Joe and the rest of their family, and we will. Uh, yeah, it's worth a listen. So. And I know they've done other interviews, but I'm just so glad that that we have a, an hour plus of them talking and. Yep. Uh, you know, getting their stories out because they they are really amazing, and and I and, I don't and, think there's a book largely, out there largely that talks about heroes. It. Yes, yeah. You're saying. So, yeah. 
Okay, next week I guess we're going to watch Fallout. Uh, a Fallout? Right? I, think and... we should, I think we should uh, hit Rebel Moon uh, Part 2. I really do. Okay, I will try to watch try. that before before next week. Hopefully it's not and six hours. I'm No, I think it's only two. I, I looked at it today. I t- tried to find it to put it in my Netflix cart or queue or whatever the hell you call it. And yeah, I, I had to search for it. Um, but yeah, I think Todd's done with, with uh, Fallout. I'm, I finished uh, I'm Fallout about halfway weekend. through. I haven't started it. And so. so we don't have to... We, we could just cover the first one or two episodes. We don't have to do the yeah, whole series. We'll see how but, far we get. Yeah. Cool. Alrighty. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.